Hi, Riverside. Hi, my ladies from Riverside. Um, how are you all doing? We, uh, we miss you very, very much. I just wanted to do this quick video, quick devotional um, for you guys. It's been on my heart for quite some time to just talk about uh, peace. Peace during this really uncertain time uh, where, you know, we don't know what's going on. We're not sure of what's happening and um, around us with, with the virus and with things, with the media. But um, it is so important as children of God that we know how to obtain peace and achieve peace even during these really difficult times. So, um, but before I get to that, I just want to say that Pastor and I, we miss you very, very much. We cannot wait until we can get back to our regular gatherings. Uh, we really, we pray and we believe that it's not going to be long um, before we can all get back together um, to some kind of a, a normality that we knew before all of this. Um, so we, you know, we often talk, Pastor and myself and the boys, we talk about you guys. We, um, we just say how much we miss seeing everyone. Our boys miss you all. They miss their friends from church. Uh, so you guys are on our minds and, and in our prayers um, daily. We, we do lift you up in prayer. Um, and um, if there's anything specific that you guys would want us to pray for, if you are um, in particular going through a hard time or uh, things are difficult, uh, please reach out to us. You can um, email me. It's just my first name and last name at gmail.com. So you read them in, so gmail com that's my personal email you guys can email me and just let me know if there's anything that I can pray for I've reached out to some of you asking if there's anything that I can pray for I um, I've made up a um, prayer list and I do lift you up in prayer um, daily so if there's anything at all uh, please reach out to me and let me know if um, there's anything that I can add on to my list so um, I just want to um, talk to you today a little bit about um, peace and how do we live in peace during times like this where the world is really um, in in chaos really it's it's everywhere where where you look if you if you watch the news if you are keeping up with the news it is um, people are driven by fear people are living in fear and it is it is a scary situation um, for the whole world to be going through this uh, but we we have the answer we know that we serve a powerful God that the God of victory and that we do not need to live in defeat. So I just want to um, talk to you a little bit about um, peace and and how to obtain it. Um, you know, I love reading Psalms. I often find myself in my devotional time just going and just reading through Psalms and just reading through what um, David you know, wrote and he was so expressive with his feelings and uh, so descriptive with um, what he was going through and, and maybe because I'm a musician and a lot of them are songs and it appears, appeals to me. Uh, but I find it so comforting that, you know, David, that, you know, the Lord himself called him a man after my own heart, uh, was not a man that did not go through things that did not struggle and he struggled internally as well uh, so I think it's important to to look at that and see what did David do in those really really difficult times um, so we before we get to that I just wanted to tell you that you know we um, we talk to our boys about what's going on and um, 
and we started asking them, you know, how do you guys feel about this? I mean, you got you you are homeschooling. Um, we have turned our uh, dining room into a classroom, so uh, their iPads are set up in our dining room. They have a printer there. They we try to wake up at a certain time, uh, you know, eat breakfast and then get schoolwork done. So they have some kind of a routine. Um, and but we started asking them, you know, how do you feel about what's going on in the world? Um, they don't watch the news, but they have been in touch with their friends. They chat with their friends from school, and and it's on, um, and it's on their minds as well. Um, and what I found just amazing that when we talked to them they did have some of the facts they knew what was going on obviously they they know because pastor and I talk about it at home as well and uh, they talk with their friends so they know what's going on they're informed but when we asked are you afraid um, you know do you guys feel like um, you guys are in danger or or anything like that they it wasn't even a thought on their mind. They were like, no, we're, we're not afraid. We're, uh, we don't feel fear right now. So I asked them, um, why, why are you not afraid? Um, not that I was encouraging them to be afraid, but just wanted to know. And they said, well, we're home. And you guys told us that we are safe. You guys are keeping us safe. And um, and we are in the safety of our home. And I thought to myself that that was so amazing that, you know, the world is going through so much outside. I mean, there's a lot going on. But our kids are really unmoved by what was happening because they know that they are in the safety of their home because they are... Uh, safe because their parents love and care for them and they want to keep them safe and I had to ask myself a question and say do we feel safe as Christians because our Heavenly Father wants the best for us he cares for us can I rest in this assurance and say you know what even though things are going on I can rest in this assurance saying you know what my Heavenly Father takes care of me he protects me because that's his heart for his kids so can we can we be like my boys where it wasn't even a thought in their mind can I say father I know that you care for me and you've got me in your hand and I don't have to worry now that doesn't deny the circumstances around us that just declares that, guess what? My comfort and my peace is in what my Heavenly Father says, not what my circumstances around me say. So I want us to look at um, King David. There's three things that I just want to talk to you quickly about. Um, when you look at David and the pattern that um, you see through Psalms and just his life is that you know David's situation was not easy David did not have his life was not a walk in the park I think we can all agree uh, with that David was anointed to be king we all know that uh, story and he found himself on the run he found himself running for his life um, you know it's hard not to ask God what's what's going on you anointed me to be king but here I am running for my life uh, there was a time where people wanted to stone him and, and he found himself in, in huge distress. And um, David writes these Psalms saying, you know, Lord, this is how I feel. Lord, this is what's going on. And I find it interesting that through everything that David was going through, he identified his feelings to the Lord. The Lord obviously knows what's going on, but David identified his feelings. If you, uh, if you open up to Psalm 61, David says, and I'll read it to you guys. Um, hear my cry. Oh God, 
listen to my prayer from the end of the earth I call to you and my heart is overwhelmed and weak lead me to the rock that is higher than I for you have been a shelter and a refuge for me a strong tower against the enemy let me dwell in your tent forever let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings what do we see here David says my heart is overwhelmed and weak My dear sisters, it's important to identify. Hello. <laughs> and um, yep, that's one of my kids. Uh, so I'm hiding in the room, by the way, recording this um, devotional. Uh, so it's important that we identify our feelings. What's going on? If you are dealing with fear, if you are dealing with anxiety, tell the Lord, Father, this is what I'm feeling. Father, I, this is, it's so overwhelming. I don't know what to do. Identify your feelings. Number two, uh, David encouraged himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord. So whenever you see his internal struggle, he identifies his feelings, but he strengthens himself in the Lord as well. Not only that, but he brings back from the past the victories that the Lord has led him to. So not only that he finds scripture for it, but he also remembers how the Lord has brought him through in the past, how the Lord has been uh, faithful in the past. For example, when um, obviously a very famous story of David and Goliath and uh, before he went, he said, Lord, you have delivered me from the mouth of the lion. He encouraged himself. I don't believe that David was not scared at all when he was about to fight this giant man and he was the little boy, but he strengthened himself in the Lord. He said, you know what? I remember when you delivered me. Why is this situation going to be different? I believe that you will deliver me again. Ladies, how are you remembering Lord's faithfulness? Write it down. I, um, I love writing things down. I, I have journals everywhere, but I also have these um, little blackboards on my fridge and, and we write things down. And it's important to write things down because you see it, you know, there's something called spiritual amnesia that you know, you do your devotional in the morning and you feel so great. And then by the afternoon, you have forgotten everything that you read. Write it down. Put it on your fridge. Put it on your wall. Put it wherever you can. Write it down. So I can remember, you know, Lord, you have, I remember a few months ago when I was having a really hard time. And you had sent a person that spoke to me. Or maybe you had sent a word that spoke to me. And you have brought me through this situation so encourage yourself in the Lord and it's important to declare things out loud there's power in declaring things when things in our earthly uh, world do not look good and we declare something there's actually power in that because we are saying, guess what? I'm not aligning myself with what's going on and what I see and the circumstances, but I'm aligning myself with what your word says. And I'm declaring it. That means I'm believing it. And number three, ask for peace. You know, identify your feelings. Encourage yourself in, in the Lord. Find scripture verses that... It, you know, with today's technology, uh, it's amazing if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling uh, anxiety, if you're feeling fear, you can just type it in, in your phone, in Google, and it will pull up all the scripture verses that you want. So it's important that you do that. Find scripture verses that will speak to your situation. Don't deny it. There's no point in denying my situation. No declaring and encouraging yourself in the Lord is in the midst of your trouble. You know, the Lord told us in this world, you will have trouble, but, but be encouraged. I have overcome the world. 
So, so encourage yourself in the Lord. And number three, ask for peace. And I would like for us to open up to Matthew 11. In Matthew 11, um, we see that Jesus wants us to come to him with our troubles. And I'll read Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you feel your father's heart in this? It says, come to me all who are weary and burdened. He doesn't deny it. He doesn't say, you shouldn't. You know, with, with what's going on, it's hard not to, you know, sometimes feel overwhelmed or um, feel, um, like it says, just burdened and weary. But the Lord wants you to come to Him. So how do you obtain peace? How do you achieve peace? We don't deny our situation. We don't deny how we're feeling. We're actually identifying our feelings, right? Then we surrender. Surrender your situation to the Lord. Say, Father, do you see how I'm feeling? Father, I feel overwhelmed, but I surrender it to you because you have overcome the world. That means you have overcome everything that comes from the Lord. And we know that fear doesn't come from the Lord. So he has overcome that. We declare his word over us. Like I said, look up scripture verses. Ladies, put on your armor. Ladies, it is so important when we go to battle, we don't go to battle unprepared. Even when Jesus was um, tempted by the devil, he didn't give him his opinion. He didn't give him, he didn't say, um, you know, well, this is what, you know, um, I think is happening, or this is because of my past, or maybe because of my circumstances right now, well, this is how I feel. No, he fought with the word of God. So if Jesus himself fought with the word of God, who are we not to fight with the word of God? And lastly, hold every thought captive. Okay, there's, there's nothing gentle about this statement. Okay, when I get attacked in my mind, when I get attacked in my thoughts, I don't plead with it. And I don't say, could you please just maybe not attack me in my thoughts? Could you please maybe not give me these, um, these thoughts? Uh, could you please possibly? No, it says take every thought captive. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody maybe being arrested or uh, detained or uh, it is not a gentle thing. Uh, and that's what we need to do. We need to take our thoughts captive, ladies. This is what um, the Bible tells us. So don't give room. Don't um, play around with the thoughts and and i'm so glad that you know in our connect group and i want to encourage you all to join us for our connect group that uh we have been studying the battlefield of the mind and it is literally tools for you how to fight fear anxiety um thoughts that are um just thoughts not of god in your mind so I want to encourage you guys join us on Sunday at 1. Uh, Nidia does a great job with leading us through this study. Um, so it is so important that we understand how to fight. So again, ladies, I just want um, I just want to encourage you to number those three points. Identify your feelings. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Find the scripture verses that speak exactly to your situation and your feelings and then ask for peace surrender say lord i'm here you know sometimes when things get crazy uh for me um you know with with the boys or with anything if we're doing something and, and i feel myself getting overwhelmed 
I will, my voice, no, will literally stop for 30 seconds and I will say, be still. And, and I'm still because the word of God tells me, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes when you are running crazy and when you are thinking and you are overthinking, you cannot know that he is God. Be still and know that he is God. Take those 30 seconds when things get bad. Take those 30 seconds and only focus your mind on God. And know that he is God. And there's nothing impossible for him. So ladies, I want to encourage you today to live in peace. To strive to obtain peace. To achieve peace. And I want to leave you with this verse in Philippians 4. 7. And it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Why does it say that peace that passes all understanding, even though I don't understand what's going on and I don't understand why maybe I'm, I'm living in so much fear and so much anxiety but I'm going to ask for peace that passes our understanding. I don't need to understand. I just need to set my mind and my heart saying I'm going to live in peace. Do we get attacked? Do we fall? Absolutely. But we get up and we fight our battles. We get up and we say I'm going to live in peace because my God tells me that it's possible. So I want to leave you with this, ladies. I hope this has um, ministered to you and that it encouraged you. Um, and again, if there's anything that I can pray for you, if there's anything that I can do, or even if you just want to FaceTime or, or chat, uh, please reach out to me. Um, let me just pray. And, and let's believe. Ask the Lord to... Um, encourage your uh, in, increase your faith in this time you know how are you growing in this time there's one thing to obtain peace and then there's another thing also how am I growing in this time so don't be discouraged take heart we are all in this together we want to support you we want to be there for you so please reach out and take heart your Father, your Heavenly Father, sees what you're going through. Father God, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness, Lord God, for who you are, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord God, that, that I can encourage myself right now, Lord God, in you, Father. Because I know I've seen you move. Lord God, I've seen your faithfulness. I've seen your goodness. I've seen your Father's heart in my life personally, Lord God. And I can encourage myself in that. Father God, so I ask right now, Lord Jesus, that for everybody that is listening to this, that your peace that passes all understanding will fall on them, Lord God. That they would have a sound mind. That they would be able to just pause and be still and know that you are God there's so much power in that specific action when we are just still and we are we know we align our mind with the knowledge of the fact that you are God and because you are God you have overcome the world and we can be encouraged in the fact that you have a victory Father God, I pray for everybody that is struggling right now, Lord Jesus, that you would meet them where they are, Lord God, that they will be encouraged by this word, that they will be able to take the tools, apply it, because it's not only about listening, but it's, it is so much more about applying the word, Father God. So I pray for every single sister, Lord God, that is listening to this, Lord Jesus, that you would, Father God, touch them, be with them, Lord Jesus. Wrap your arms of love around them. Let them know that they're not alone. Father God, and we will, um, we will trust in you. We will give you glory, Lord Jesus. 
even in these times in these uncertain times father god we give you glory we give you praise because you are god i thank you for what you've done i thank you for what you're doing and i thank you for what's to come lord jesus that you we would be able lord god to rejoice in victory lord god because this is who you are father god i thank you lord god for <clears throat> for protecting us lord jesus I thank you, Lord God, for keeping us safe, Lord Jesus. And I thank you that your Father's heart is to bless, is to encourage, is to strengthen, Lord God. So teach me, Lord God. Teach us, Lord, how to just lean in that and rest in that. And we will be careful to give you glory for everything that you do and for who you are. Amen. Amen. Ladies, thank you for listening. Thank you for taking time to listen to this. And I hope that um, you're blessed.